Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening of the day of the resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his sides. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hand. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jesus' side. 
the author of the Gospel does not say that Thomas did this. He does say, though, that at that point, Thomas believed. In Bible study, Wednesday evening, Martha gave us a poem about the disciple Thomas as he's depicted in this particular instance. It's a poem by Thomas Traynor. These things did Thomas count as real. The warmth of blood, the chill of steel, the grain of wood, the heft of stone, the last frail twitch of flesh and bone. The vision of his skeptic mind was keen enough to make him blind to any unexpected act, too large for his small world. His reason certainly denied that one could live when one died. Until his fingers read like red the markings of the spear. May we, O oh God, by grace believe, and thus the risen Christ receive, whose raw and printed palms reach out and beckon Thomas from his death. Although he's sometimes referred to as doubting Thomas, there's no reason to judge Thomas as having doubt instead of a faith. Okay. One is not diametrically opposed to the other. In her book, Amazing Grace, Kathleen Norris tells of a Benedictine monk, well along in years, who said that doubt is merely the seed of faith a sign that faith is alive and ready to grow. You see, Kathleen Norris described herself to the monk as having weighty doubts and intellectual frustrations about Jesus, Christianity. She had thought that they were major obstacles to her faith. Later, she could appreciate the most wisdom about doubt being the seed of faith. It is reasonable that there were and are questions about Jesus and Christianity. A man crucified, dead, buried, yet risen alive and appearing to others. A religious faith and community, grown following his death, from an original core of only twelve men, none of whom had spoken up for him before he was sentenced to death. Surely these are reasons enough to wonder There were questions in the church's early days similar to those that are posed now. How was Jesus raised? Where is Jesus now? Will he return? What are his followers, us, to be doing? We need to be something. As the word of new birth in Christ spread, the process of initiating new members into the community developed, preparing those who desired it for baptism. We know from the Ash Wednesday exhortation that the season of Lent provided a time when converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism, which took place during the great vigil of Easter. The first Eucharist of Easter is celebrated in that liturgy, as you know. And it's 
followed, of course, by Easter Sunday. With a brief interview with Keish and Champagne. <laughs> <laughs> there is a widespread rumor that Easter ends with Easter Sunday, when Easter Sunday ends. Don't you see this? Remember what Father Tom said last week and during inquirer's class and during the class preparing us for Holy Week and in the insert in your bulletin. Easter is a liturgical season that continues for 50 days. The great 50 days of Easter. In the early church, it was during those 50 days that the newly baptized who were all adults, explored the mysteries of their new faith. This time period and content were called Mistabuji. I believe these are not mysteries to be solved, but to be recognized as holy and received as gifts. Eucharistic Prayer A says, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Say it with me. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. That expresses the mystery of our faith in Christ. There are other mysteries of the faith that have to do with us and our actions. Today, the whole church is involved in the mystagogia regarding us, corporately and individually, helping to make known what was once unknown and to make visible what was once invisible. It has to do with understanding more deeply this community of faith we are a part of called church, who we are, and how we are to live as followers of the risen Lord through scripture, sacrament, and service. To that end, all of the scripture readings throughout the Easter season are from the New Testament, with the first reading each Sunday being from the Acts of the Apostles instead of Hebrew scripture. In this way, we'll see the work of the apostles, the growth and development of the church. We'll see and participate in the sacraments of the Holy Eucharist. All of the sacraments being outward and visible signs of an inward and spiritual grace. We'll be reminded of and renewed for our servanthood in Christ. Opening our small world of fact to these mysteries of our faith, fearlessly discerning who we are, how we are to live, and how we are to serve. This could be what we are to be doing. As individuals and as St. Peter's Episcopal Church, this could be our Episcopalia. <coughs> Our mystery exploring process during the great 50 days of history. It can take us from seeing is believing to believing is seeing. May we, O oh God, 